Hi, I'm Scout Wilkins, and I've been fortunate enough to live an incredibly interesting and uh, adventuresome life. And right now I'm a wilderness guide in Zion National Park in Utah. And uh, so I want to talk to you about why adventure matters. I've actually, um, in my adventuresome life, I've actually suffered a lot of depression and resignation and even hopelessness. And it's left me taking a deep inner dive into the inner human world as well. So I actually explore and guide in that territory too, along with the wilderness guiding. And it's been clear to me that my quest is about connection and how to make connection because connection is central to my happiness. I know that I can't live without the level of connection that I know is possible. I've been there, but I kept pulling myself out of there. And so a lot of my life I felt disconnected and hopeless. And I knew that my life was not worth living without the level of connection that I know is possible. So I've uh, reached some conclusions or understandings for myself about what it is that makes connection possible and how that's related to adventure. And that's what I'd like to share with you today. A couple of the places that I guide in Zion are famous epic adventures. This one is the Narrows. It's a 2,000 foot deep slot canyon. It's an amazing place to go and it's a, a potentially very dangerous place to go if there were ever a flash flood. There are places that you would get washed out. So it's a big deal to go into the Narrows. You want to know what you're doing. Angel's Landing is the other one. The Narrows, you go deep. Angel's Landing, you go high. It goes up the spine of a ridge on either side, you've got a thousand foot drop off. In some places, it's the width of a sidewalk. You're holding on to a chain. The thing that I love about Angel's Landing is that everybody you meet up there is very alive. Their eyes are lit up. They're not phoning it in. They are present, and I love that. This is actually my son about to rappel down into the Narrows. I, yeah, I love this shot. So the, the thing about adventure is that it carries risk. What makes it adventure, one of the things that makes it adventure is it carries real risk. Part of your body thinks you might die and part of your body actually becomes extremely aware that you might die today. I mean, it brings it into exact focus. Right now, there's a risk. And there are a lot of things in the world that can kill you. The f a fall off Angel's Landing, a flash flood in the Narrows, sure, but th those things don't kill nearly as many people. I mean, those, those things, maybe once a year, somebody falls off Angel's Landing. It's been years and years since, <laughs> I mean, it's real, I, it's, it's real. But it has been years and years since anybody was uh, caught in a flash flood in the Narrows. But these other things coming out, failing a critical test, asking your family for financial help, making a wrong choice, those things kill people every day. So the trick with adventure, the trick with risk, the trick with staying alive is somehow finding out the difference between something that's actually truly inherently dangerous, the difference between a fall off Angel's Landing, or asking your family for help seeming so dangerous that you'd actually kill yourself before you do it. One of the things that's extremely cool about adventure is I think the, th the main thing about adventure is it's something you really want to do. You want this thing. It's not Monday morning work. It's Saturday afternoon going to this place. Or it's you want to write that book and it's an adventure to get there. So there are things you're doing that are scary that will take you there. So you start the trip and then you find out whatever you find out about yourself and then you go home and you learn more. You learn new skills. You do whatever you need to do to hone your mastery, and then you go out and try it again. Adventure offers the kind of challenges that have you feeling alive, that have you lit up. So it gets your spirit involved, it gets your aliveness involved. This chart was developed by Mikhail Csikszentmihalyi who wrote the book Finding Flow. 
And to me, flow is, uh, adventure is all about being in flow. That's where you are. You're lit up. You're not judging. You're not overthinking it. Everything about your system is involved in what you're doing, and it's an amazing state. The thing is to get there, you have to get through control, you have to get through anxiety, and those things are very difficult to get through on your own. The thing is adventure will take you right there. Adventure will put you right in that spot. This little critter is central to my understanding now of how I allow myself to get to the adventure. This is a ring-tailed cat that lives in Zion National Park. And this is what I now relate to as my animal. And when I say that, I'm not talking about a spirit animal. I'm not talking about a concept. But what I'm, what I'm talking about is the fact that I'm now extremely aware that my mind and my body are two very separate things. And my body is my animal. My body is just like this sweet little ring-tailed cat. And what I've been doing and, and what I've actually experienced most of my life with this push to push through, exercise willpower, just show up, just fake it till you make it, that does not work for this animal. And what had happened to my animal really is for a variety of reasons. My animal had become completely hopeless because I might, the level of self-judgment that I had come to in my life by the time I was about 50, it was just terminal. There was nothing. My, my self-judgment was so huge. My expectation of myself was so abusive that this animal had curled up and said, what? is the point. And so when I think of it in these terms with this little animal, what it does is it, it changes my entire relationship with what motivates me, what gets me going. My mind is not in charge of this animal. My mind is a partner with this animal. And my mind, the best it can do is sit quietly and be so loving to this animal that it will come out that it will come out and play. And so this little critter, what feeds this critter, what I've learned, is I did it. This critter does not respond to being pulled by a leash. It does not respond to being pushed. You can imagine what happens when I push it. What it responds to is I did it. So when I get out there and I go out into that place that scares me, whether it's public speaking, whether it's starting to write my book, whether it's going and talking to my family about something that's really deep in my heart, like, wow, okay, I guess I just missed the memo that I'm a lesbian and here I am married and what are we going to do about that? <laughs> so... This, I love this picture. This was Sean who was assisting me the other day in the Narrows and we had taken a group with these four kids and their parents. To me this picture, what it shows is what happens at the end of the adventure. We had gone into the Narrows, we had done the whole day, it had been great and these kids came out with a whole new level of body understanding. You know things with your mind but when you really know them is when you bring them into your body, when you do them when you do them. And that's when your animal gets the I did it. That's when your animal gets fed. These animals were well fed on these days, this day. So this is a client that I had talked to for three days. We had done a lot of inner work, but then I took her into the canyon and it changed everything. You mean I'm gonna rappel down that cliff? I mean, she hadn't even, I mean, it was amazing what we did. But in three repels, she changed her life. And she took herself, the thing about all of this is that there's a fractal nature to all of it, right? What happens at the cellular level happens at the uh, organism level. It happens at the community level. It happens at the global level. So whatever learning you get at whatever level, it maps over to everything in your life. And so 
as she was going through the canyon facing these big adventures, they were taking her back in time. She was actually in the closet that her, cous her cousins had locked her into and banged on and called the torture chamber. She moved through that on that day. She felt herself deal with it differently. It was incredible. It was incredible. But the person who's the most sure about what you can or especially can't do is you. And this adventure will challenge that because you're going to get out and do it. You're going to get out and do it anyway because you want to so bad. And the cool thing about that is that when you learn that you don't so know as much as you think about yourself, that there's so much more possible, you go back into your relationships with a new level of not knowing and being okay not knowing. And you show up into your relationships knowing what you do know about the situation and your capabilities, but really getting what you don't know and willing to be surprised and willing to see these people as far more capable than you ever saw them before and yourself far more capable, your relationships change so fast. So here's something I think about quite a bit. What if things are not as messed up as we think they are, but what if we're actually as human as a species, what if we are in this evolutionary moment where we're moving out of this late and incredibly conflicted post-adolescent time and we're moving into a maturity of our species where we're going to be these incredible, beautiful, mature versions of ourselves, loving ourselves, loving each other, loving the earth, acting accordingly. I believe that is what's happening and that's a huge call and that's a huge adventure and it takes everything we've got. But when we do, what we get is tribe. We get to, to connect in a way, this, this mature version of ourselves, we're going to be connecting in such an incredible way. It's already happening. I imagine we have these amazing antenna that early in our lives they got beat down. You know, our culture didn't, we came in sensitive and our culture didn't know how to deal with that. So our, our antenna just got flattened. No harm, no foul, it's just, it's what happens. But as we're doing what we're doing and we're sharing with each other how amazing we actually are and we're showing up and being ourselves in this adventure, what can't we be? It's amazing. So, you do need to know that your personal adventure is going to change you, it's going to change everybody around you, and it's going to be in a good way. It may be painful, it's going to blow some stuff up, there's going to be messiness, but it's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. And my biggest payoff for the adventures in my life have been in my family. The things that we have gone through as a family <laughs> and the way that we're able to model for our community. You know, Will and I came together as great adventurers. We were met at outfitting in Idaho, ran, run horseback rides and long, long trips in the wilderness. Moved out to Montana, started a timber frame business, built that together, had two sons. Um, when the boys were 13 and 15 was when I figured out that my long-time depression had so much to do with the fact that I had missed the fact that I am a lesbian and I had just, so much of my truth had been hidden. And so I came out and I said, okay, here we are, now what? And we made the conscious decision to expand our family rather than to break it up. And so sure, we got divorced, we are not married, we are not what we were, but we're so much more than what we were. Our kids have never had to choose. It's never been a problem. Well, I can't say it's never been a problem, but there's never been the love and support there because we were willing to be different. We were willing to be ourselves and do it our way. But we were willing to do that because we had a long history of adventure. You don't just step into that one day. You have to build that muscle to be willing to get out there in the scary stuff and do it anyway because you want it so bad. What I want more than anything is for this granddaughter of mine to have an amazing life with her antenna completely unfurled. 
completely wide open. I want her to be as beautiful. This is a moth. Moths have amazing antenna. They fly at night. They're just, it's, if you watch a movie of their antenna, it's incredible. Well, I think our antenna are far more beautiful than that. Far more beautiful. And so I am just so excited to be living in a time where as messy as it is, we're learning to unfurl our antenna together. We're learning to be real together. We're learning to step into the scary things, have the scary conversations, take the big adventures. They might be adventures in art, in writing, in speaking, in family. It's all adventure. But the thing is to have the level of fun you want to have that'll get your body out there so that you can claim those I did it. Feed that little animal and make it happen. Thank you. <laughs>